Hello everyone and welcome to this Aquas 2020 tutorial. This is the first in a series of tutorials in which you will learn how to use Aquas 2020. In this tutorial you will get a brief introduction to the demo scenes contained in Aquas 2020. If you are already familiar with Aquas, you may recognize some of the features. However, Aquas 2020 works very different from the old Aquas and has a variety of new and powerful features. This tutorial is to show you what you should see when you open up the demo scenes that come with Aquas 2020 and which features to keep an eye out for. This way you can check whether Aquas 2020 is working correctly on import. We're not going to go into setting up and tweaking the water just yet, but we will do that in the next videos. The asset comes with a total of 8 demo scenes located inside the assets folder under Aquas 2020 forward slash demo forward slash scenes. You will see two additional folders in here, one that says high performance and one that says high quality. They each contain two scenes, the same scenes in fact, but with different setup for the water, one focused on performance and the other one on quality. We will start by opening the high quality folder and inside we're going to open the lake scene. Once the scene has loaded, we should be able to simply enter play mode and have a look around. Notice that the scene can be navigated in game view using the WSAD keys and the mouse. The E and the Q key will allow you to move up and down vertically. One of the first differences between Aquas and Aquas 2020 can be seen right at the shore, where the water can now produce shoreline normals that act and look like small waves. A huge leap forward that Aquas has made is with the underwater effects. Aquas 2020 does no longer require Unity's post-processing stack. Instead, all effects will be produced by scripts and shaders that come with the asset. A major improvement is the way underwater effects are being rendered. If the screen is only partially submerged, only the part of the screen that is submerged will render underwater effects, and the rest won't. Parts of the screen that emerge from the water will briefly show droplets drying out. The underwater parameters of Aquas 2020 are more dynamical. Underwater effects do not keep the same color and density, instead those two parameters can change the deeper you go into the water. Diving really deep can make it dark and dense while moving close to the surface makes everything brighter, simulating the water's light absorption more accurately. Let's have a look at the caustics. The caustic effects in Aquas 2020 are in world space, allowing them to have the same scale on all objects that receive the projection. They also can show the color of the objects that receive the projection, making them more realistic than when they only had a color of their own. The downside of this is however, that these Corsics are a bit more demanding on performance than they used to. Together with the masked out and the water effects, this is why this setup is considered high quality, but may not be the best choice if performance is more important to you than looks. Let's have a look and compare the scene with the lake scene from the high performance folder. Go back to the scenes folder, open up the high performance folder and open the lake scene. It looks quite the same at first, but we notice that there is no partial submersion here. To further increase performance, Corsics have also not been added. With this setup, the camera can by definition be either underwater or not, but nothing in between. When it moves out of the water, the entire screen gets a droplet effect applied to it for the amount of time specified. In this case, one second. Other parameters like underwater color, density, blur and distortion are handled the same way as with the other setup. Other than the missing partial submersion and the missing caustics, there is no difference between the high performance and the high quality setup. Next, we're going to have a look at the river demo. For this, we're going to open up the river scene in the high quality folder, just so we can always get to see all the underwater effects in action. Let's hit play and explore the scene. We see the same shoreline waves as before. The water color is different, there is a property that is fully controllable. The river feature uses a flow map to simulate horizontal water flow. Unlike in the old version of Aquas, Aquas 2020 simulates the river flow on both front face and back face so that the river flow can also be seen from underneath the surface. Let's get to the reflections. Here, you get a lot more control over reflections than in previous versions. While the main camera source for reflections used to be real-time reflections created using an invisible camera, Aquas 2020 also allows to control the reflections provided by reflection probes. Real-time reflections and reflection probe reflections are interchangeable and combinable. 
Real-time reflections can be fully replaced by reflection probe reflections with all reflection parameters controllable when needed. Let's move on to the next scene. Go to the Scenes folder and open up the scene called Infinite Water. Once it is loaded, we can simply hit play. The sole purpose of this demo is to show you how Aquas does infinite water. While we still have the same amount of detail up close, above and below the water surface, we can now move away from it as far as we want and it will always reach the horizon. Notice that the camera's far clipping plane for this scene has been set to 30,000. The parts of the water that we require for an infinite setup are working in world space. This allows us to move the camera as far as we want in any direction Aquas will always go to the horizon. Distance-based tiling does its work preventing visible tiling. The second last scene we're going to have a look at is the scene called Depth Support, located in the Scenes folder. This is one of Aquas's most powerful abilities. It allows the water to write correctly to the depth buffer while preserving its transparent nature. This is especially useful when using effects such as real-time shadows, screen space fog and volumetric lighting like Aura. When we enter play mode, we can see the shadows of the cubes on the water surface. This indicates that the depth buffer is correct and all other effects that require it should also work on the water surface. We can see that we can look through the surface and watch the caustics below. Everything else such as the underwater effects work the same as before. Notice that the scene view now seems off and wrong. This is because the effect is tied to one camera, in this case the scene's main camera. Everything will be sampled for it. Cameras in different positions, such as the scene camera, will show wrong results. The last scene we're going to have a look at is the shallow water scene from the scenes folder. It shows a water created specifically for simulating environments with shallow waters such as puddles or flooded interiors and exteriors. This water is for the most part transparent and provides the reflections based on a Fresnel effect but has no shoreline or any color options apart from the specular color since shallow water does not usually absorb a lot of light. This water is very performant and ideal for environments in which a transparent water without any shoreline effects is sufficient. A big plus of this shader is that it also writes correctly to the depth buffer and thus can work with all effects that rely on it. Unlike in the previous scene, the shallow water does not need to do the sampling for one individual camera. All cameras will render the water correctly. One additional scene I would like to show you is the buoyancy demo scene from the Scenes folder. If you are already familiar with Aquas' buoyancy feature, there may not be a lot of new information for you to get in this scene. When you hit play, you get three boats sliding down those three rams into the water. This scene is to demonstrate how the buoyancy feature that comes with Aquas works. Notice that there is no water rendering inside the boat. This is done using a depth mask, which I will cover in another tutorial. Alright everybody, that is about it for the demo scenes. In the next tutorial, we're going to have a look at how to use Aquas' setup wizard for basic and advanced water setup, as well as for setting up underwater effects. If you have any questions, please send me a message or leave a post on the forum. Thank you very much for watching.